If you're interested in it, Brian's talking about it. You're with Brian Kilmeade. I actually did not know what 990s were before all of this happened. Something's being weaponized against us that many people don't even know and honestly don't care about. The accountant handled that. Like, I, I don't know what that is. Um, it, it is such a trip now to hear the word, the, 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 the term 990s. I'm like, Ugh, it's like triggering. <laughs> Patrice Cullors, who was of, uh, one of the leaders of Black Lives Matter, now no one wants to hit up the organization. Why? Because they had $100 million. Now they have $9 million, and they haven't paid any taxes. This <laughs> man's very familiar with Jimmy. Very familiar, Jimmy, right? Jimmy <laughs> Fahler joins us right now. Good to see have you, Have you ever had $100 million, woken up and realized you had nine? No, I, I, but I didn't run an organization, BLM, that stands for Buy Large Mansions. It's no kidding. So I would have, I don't but know. I have you ever seen more better. people look at this organization and say, yeah, I'm not running that? No. More people, no one wants to run it. No one has run it. They, no, they knew the it country. was a racket from word one. I mean, you can tell they got to where they were as a, it was a shake and it was a grift just based on the soundbite you just played. They've been hiding behind like woke word salad. Like this is triggering. What's the implication there? That it's racist to make black people pay taxes? Don't even bring it up again. I, I've been audited twice in like the last five years, by the way. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it, I didn't have the option of getting on the phone and being like, you know, I'm a little triggered here, so I'm just going to hold on to the money now. How do you think Trump feels? I believe he has been... Rated? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's been rated. They arrest his lawyer. They had they flipped another uh, one yeah. of his lawyers to, t- uh, to turn on his client. Well, and remember what they're doing with the Trump organization. They're accusing him of uh, false expenses. Oh, yeah. Well, and they put his CFO in jail. How about that? Well, to be fair, though, in the Stormy Daniels case, uh, he did pay her by check, and she's supposed to get paid in singles. Right, which so, is you know, a problem. You, you got to be mindful. Right, you and be you got to, you know, you have to be willing to criticize yourself when you make a mistake. <laughs> uh, there's no doubt about it. Good to see you, man. So, yeah, it's good to see you. So this is one of those things that's happening now, but it mm-hmm. ruined for everything because yep. most people, you know, if they want to, they could help. You look at what's happening in the inner city and see single-parent families. If I, if you yep. think to yourself, man, I'd love to help those kids. Yes, I think about to help the next generation. And then you give some money and you're talking. I saw Jennifer Aniston give over a million dollars. Big deal. Right. So when we go, where is it? And that's the thing. Right. There's no pushback from any of these corporations. Well, because one, they don't want to. I mean, what what's the implication for them? If the corporations go, hey, what happened to the money? We're going after this organization. They get hit with the, so what, so the Black Lives Not Matter now? I mean, mm-hmm. that's that was the effectiveness of this grift, is that they shook down every corporation, they shook down every celebrity, but there's no actual follow-up in terms of where this money went. Again, as you said, most of these people donated in good faith. The corporations did. That was a shakedown. It was an electoral summer. The Democrats piggybacked off of this movement pretty aggressively. But there has been no deliverable. You know what I'm saying? Like, where is the outcry that there was no scholarship fund? Or maybe in a failing inner city school. And talk about the craziness. Yeah. Do you remember you better have six feet apart? You better not go yeah. outside. You oh, yeah. Got to wear a mask outside. Mm-hmm. But when Anthony Fauci was viewing the riots in the streets, because, no, they're keeping their distance. Well, I don't really see a problem. While you, burning down a city. But you got to understand, COVID, probably made in a Chinese lab, understands that when you're looting a Chinese Nike store, okay, there's some type of DNA alignment Did I know there. That. Yeah, yeah. Have you been talking to Dr. Marty McCary? <laughs> oh, or, McCary uh, uh, he does Siegel. come on my show. McCary comes on and dumbs it down. Right. We I, talk I, about it. <laughs> because he understands uh, that Anthony Fauci's a, a fraud. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's a total scam. But again, that's where the that's where people like there's been so much damage done to the trust and in institutions in this country. And the odd part is that the people lecturing the most about protecting the integrity of these institutions are the ones destroying them. Like when you talk about, you know, the DOJ, what was the big criticism on conservatives when we were questioning the Mueller probe? Oh, they're undermining faith in the DOJ. Yeah. But what did we come to know? We shouldn't have had any faith to begin with. But it's the people yelling. Yeah, You're undermining democracy, said the people who made up the Russian collusion hoax. So let's talk about Hunter Biden. I love it. Right? And Mm -hmm. the fact is, we brought up this last night on The Five, what is it with Hunter? Hunter College, Hunter Biden. Is there, (laughs) there's always a problem. If someone's named Hunter, just turn yourself in. It doesn't end Right. Or, you know, it turns out, though, this woman might get away with it. She turned herself in and gets a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. Well, she had, when's the last, she had a machete at somebody's neck who happened to be a reporter. (laughs) And then went out to to start him after he left the building still have no idea what could what he could be charged she could be charged but this is the kind of insanity we've created these people like her did that without ever once thinking it could cost her her job because up until now you know they've supported people like this colleges remember this stanford law had a member of the trump administration out there to speak they literally attacked an invited guest 
Like a he judge. Was a, like he was a villain on a daytime talk show. Right, so, you ain't all that. I'm like, right. no, that's not what he was here to do. But but evidently the equity manager yeah. officer was there to say, listen, these two, these it's not fair to these kids to have you talk, really? Yeah. Because she was that. appointed by it Trump. Was a, and it was and it was an invited guest. Think right. about Riley Gaines at San Francisco stage. Get barricaded into a classroom. Right. And there is no actual retribution for these people. So that's kind of the environment they've created. She thought, oh, it's a machete. Is it a little much? Maybe I should have went with a smaller knife. Right. But she's not thinking I should have pulled no knife at all. That's the problem. So her name is Reuven Fenton. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. The reporter is Reuven Fenton. Mm -hmm. And he sees what happened when Shelly Ann Rodriguez did this at Hunter when she spotted pro-life students with a stack table and brochures. You're not educated. This is propaganda. What are you going to do? Like anti-trans next? Is that what you're gonna do next? Yeah. I mean, Wait, what? No, we're, we're talking about abortion. This is <laughs> this is violent. You're triggering my students. <laughs> you're, There's no, a word not, again. Because you can't even have a baby. That's so you don't even know what that is. Whoa, so whoa, 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 whoa. Out of here, bro. She wrecks the place. Now, now, let me jump in here, though, because she said, What's next? Anti trans stuff? Yeah. And then what did she say to him? You can't even have babies. Hey, that's anti-trans. Right. Hold on a second. Now uh, you're now uh, you're yeah, trans. Now she's the transphobe. Now <laughs> who let J.K. Rowling into the room? <laughs> oh, this is nuts. It's so, so dumb. So this woman wasn't done. Later yeah. on that day, she goes home after this <laughs> goes viral, and this is how this one out. Now try to put this together. Reuben Fenton is a reporter in the New York Post. He thought he'd knock on her door and see if she wants to give her side of the story at Hunter. Let's uh -huh. listen. We just wanted to speak to this woman. We thought uh, we, we might have a chance, given that uh, she's obviously passionate about her beliefs, and maybe if we showed up to her door, she'd uh, be willing to, to grant us an interview. You know, in my career, I've knocked on 10,000 doors, you know, hoping for interviews, and once in a while, you get one, and I thought this might work out. But I got a, a bit of a surprise uh, when, when uh, she opened the door. This was a first for me. She uh, first verbally threatened uh, to, to chop us up with the machete, and then proceeded to come uh, out of her apartment brandishing the blade and, and pressing it against the side of my neck for about a second. And then she saw that she was being taped. Can you imagine if the guy wasn't rolling on this? Yeah. If he's not rolling on that, she's still employed. And right. We, but, but again, although she gets fired, okay, there's a thousand of her in academia right now. Who probably hired 10, Somebody who has that same type of like DEI mentality of we need people that'll come into our campus and tell the kids the whole country is racist and then charge them $800,000 for the privilege of being told so. So, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I used to make fun of myself for going to community college, but there's nothing smarter you could do with your money than get at least two years of transferable credits for next to nothing Right. And not leave hating America. Right. And you don't because you get in, you get out. These play, these these teachers are not trying to win you over on campus. Yep. They know you usually have another job on the side. Yep. You're leaving. Okay. Right. They they tell, they make sure you get back and forth to nickel beer night safe. Right. And they let you have your education. That's it. Shout out to community college. Nassau community if you're listening. And I know you are. Well, when we were, uh, when I was graduating, they had Farmingdale yep. or Nassau. Yep. Now Farmingdale won four years. Yeah, Farmingdale went big. Right, so now they're eligible to get illegal immigrants. But do you, uh, <laughs> like Stony Brook Scott them too? Yeah, Stony Brook's Albany and Buffalo. Do you want to laugh? Uh, Hofstra, great school. A lot of lot of lot of Fox execs went. My sister went. Okay, I got to speak at Hofstra uh, to their broadcast journalism majors about getting a job in broadcasting. And it was my favorite thing in the world. I said, well, you're going to want to start by walking across the street to the community college where I went. And the administrators were like, oh, Jimmy, would you look at the time? Thanks for coming, pal. <laughs> but it was and funny. They were good people. But they were good, and they yeah. said you had, an, you had an unorthodox way on the other. I did, yeah. Um, you know, and you could say what you want about taking hostages and low-level extortion attempts, but no. Right. I, I went to community college. Obviously, I was driving a cab. I was doing stand-up. And I got in the door here at Fox because they just booked me to be a guest on Kennedy. That's how we kind of got this ball rolling. Right. And then I just got good at sneaking onto set. You know, it's live TV. Once you're in the shot, they're not going to pull you out. It's yeah. terrible for the and network. And this is terrible advice to kids. <laughs> this, is, this is some of the worst. This is the worst TED talk ever. <laughs> That's funny. Bro, so, uh, listen, uh, uh -huh. I was going to talk about it. Let's just do this real quick. Uh -huh. There's another whistleblower that's come forward. Yes. And I was stunned. I was flipping around last night waiting for you to come on Hannity. And I saw Anderson Cooper mm -hmm. toss to a reporter. And they talked about the, the exactly. second whistleblower yeah. in the Hunter Biden case. Uh -huh. Then I find out CBS talked to Gary Shapley yes. about what he saw. So notice I'm noticing other people outside Fox. Uh -huh. Cut 28. In January 2020, he was assigned to what he calls a high-profile investigation. Who's the subject of the investigation? 
I can't con confirm or deny the, the subject of this investigation. Why not? Because, you know, part of the tax secrecy laws don't allow it. Shapley can't say it, but CBS News has learned the investigation was the probe of Hunter Biden by the Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in Delaware. Senior Biden administration officials have vowed to let it run its course without interference. But CBS News has obtained this letter Shapley's lawyers sent to Congress Monday alleging irregularities in DOJ's handling of the investigation. Shapley is seeking legal protections from Congress so he can share specifics of his allegations. Mm. Your, your reaction. Number one, Merrick Carlin is as corrupt as a day is oh, long. Oh, what a scam. Am I right? And this agent, okay, he knew something was up when they started telling him they felt triggered by his... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're, you're weaponizing this line of questioning. It was very shades of BLM. This is where the liability presents itself for Biden, okay? As you know, he's historically unpopular within his own party. OK, he has gotten this far because the media has kind of covered for him. They did his campaigning in 2020. And although they kicked the tires about getting him out of there, you know, in the run up to the midterms, he exceeded expectations. The media kind of laid off. OK, but this is a media that would be willing to out him in this brief window they have should an alternative present itself because they really don't feel confident going to the polls with him. You saw it. Yeah. 36% approval, 33% think he's a strong leader. Sir, I mean, right now, you're, you're legitimately handing out cruise brochures to people who are on the lifeboats from the Titanic. You know, right. it's not. The, it's, a, it's a hard sell right now. They're still shivering from getting off the But the they see head-to-head head yes. that he still beats Trump within the margin of error, and, and the, that gives them hope. Well, what gives them hope is, yes, Trump leading in the primaries by as much as he does because I, he could beat Trump, you know, because Trump, they, they can turn out an anti-Trump. Do so you believe vote. that Biden can beat Trump? I believe he can. I'm not saying he would, but Trump, he can't beat anybody but Trump. Because the thing is, Trump turns out for the Democrats an anti-Trump vote. Okay, they'll vote anti-Trump in your in like literally your county comptroller. I don't even know what the guy does, but if you run one ad that says he'll stand up to Trump, right. you get like 60% Democrat turnout off that alone. Right. So that's where Trump is challenged, is there's an anti-Trump vote out there that doesn't exist yet at the level that it does for a DeSantis or a Scott. They're certainly going to try. I mean, they're throwing everything at DeSantis. Right. And if, heaven forbid, Tim Scott gets the nomination, which is a comedian I would like to see happen, only because they will continue to call him the white supremacist. And it's exactly. going to be the funniest thing in the world. Well, I, I love that. I think it was Lee Elder. Uh, yeah. They came out. He was the black face of white the supremacy. The black face of white. This is the thing. If all these guys are white supremacists, there's like a typo in the handbook. Right. I got to be honest with you. We got <laughs> to get the publisher on the phone. Who edited this thing? Right. Did you see Vanity Fair's headline? Um, unbelievable. Yeah. He said, "Well, Elon <laughs> Musk will interview Ron DeSantis because David Duke was not available." Which? Where did that come from? You just play. You just tried to hit it out of the park in spring training. Yeah. You should wait till right before the election. You're not supposed to. You don't even know him yeah, yet. They say in comedy, "Kill me," and you don't open with your closer. Yeah. Okay. That that is not an opening line. That's a closer. Right. <laughs> so wow. you did, but you basically said for, for a business perspective, yeah. you just basically told 50% of your audience, don't touch Vanity Fair. Yeah. So instead of like, wow, Vanity Fair's got some good story. Now, now it's, it's a waste of time. Isn't it so crazy, though, that all of the people in these departments prioritize everything except the customer? Right. You know what I mean, it used to be like the customer's always right. Now it's like, ah, the customer's always a racist. Forget yeah. them. Uh, it's like having a, a room full of people as a, a waiter and a bartender and just ignoring them. Yeah. <laughs> right? it's just, uh, I'm here to impress my manager. All right, crazy. let's take a break. Jim, come out and find out what Jimmy Fela is going to be doing the rest of the day. Ooh. Are you doing anything? But, uh, don't answer. Mm. That was a trick. Cliffhanger. Back in a moment. <laughs> With Nancy leading the way, you never had to worry about whether the bill would pass. She said she had the votes. She had the votes every time. <laughs> and she had the votes so many life-changing pieces of legislation. She helped rescue the economy in the Great Depression. <laughs> Ah. Right, the Great Depression. She saw the Great Depression. Now, FDR has gotten so much credit. Jimmy <laughs> Fallon, who wrote the article, did you write a column? The FDR, uh, the the Depression. Stop giving FDR the credit. Was that the headline? Well, to be fair, I do believe Biden and Pelosi were both in government at the time of the Great Depression. She was born at the Great Depression <laughs> right at that time. The stock market crash at 29. But, I mean, you have no idea what he's going to say Listen, uh, on a regular basis. Shame on everybody pretending this is okay. Like 32% of the people don't think he's mentally fit to serve now. So we're going to do this to the guy for another four years. Like, it's actually cruel of us. Where's his wife? 
Well, you know where she is. She's doing magazine shoots and, you know. She, Enjoying she being the this. president. She likes this gig. Clearly likes being the president, and that's what you've got to hope. You've got to hope that if he wins a second term, Jill's a better president with a little more experience. So yeah, Kamala Harris was supposed to be the heir apparent that gave a sense of competency, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever you think of Elizabeth Warren, mm -hmm. nobody thinks she's old or incompetent. You yeah. just don't like her views. Yes, that's not the story with Harris. Harris blew the deal mm -hmm. because she's not good. She's not smart. She doesn't hustle. She doesn't read. Uh -huh. She doesn't prepare. Nothing. That's what blew this deal. Yes, and what's so funny about it is the Democrats tried to warn the rest of the country. Don't ever forget, she ran. She ran for the presidency and dropped out of the Democratic primaries before the first vote was cast in the Iowa caucuses. Like, that is the political equivalent of passing out at 11 o'clock on New Year's Eve. Right. You don't even make the ball drop. Uh, yeah. You're, you're and, the one in the bathroom. And, could I, and we were talking about this in the break, that you didn't love DeSantis' rollout. A lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. But the one who know had a great rollout, Kamala mm -hmm. Harris. Yeah. Great speech. Even Trump was like, she's going to be G good. Give her that. She's going to be good. Attorney General, Senator from California, look out. Tough questioner of Kavanaugh. And yep. then... The problem is she didn't study at all on health care, on immigration, just didn't have any answers. The next day she was walking things back. Everybody quit on her. Mm -hmm. A precursor was happening as vice president. Yep. So I would there's not I, I and I love talking to people like you about what you think is gonna happen between Trump and DeSantis. Mm -hmm. And most people say nothing will change about Trump. Governor Huckabee weighed in last night on the show you okay. were on. Cut ten. It's a long way before anybody even votes in a caucus or primary. So there's a lot of time for things to happen. Ron DeSantis clearly steps into the race in the number two slot, but it's a distant number two. And what Ron DeSantis does not have at this point is a fanatically loyal base of people who are as fanatically loyal to him as they are to Donald Trump. Trump's base is unmovable. In fact, Trump's base is growing. And in large part, the more the media and the government but that's now become all one. Uh, the more they try to discredit and we find out about the lies and the criminal activity they've done to him and against him, I think the stronger it makes him. He says his base is growing. Do you agree with what Huckabee said? No, this is where I respectfully disagree with Huckabee. I think people who are active consumers of politics realize Trump has been railroaded. But I think the casual fan is looking at a bigger picture and that they associate Trump with a lot of his perceived liabilities, whether they're fair or unfair. So I think Trump has to, to change the narrative, just has to show us a better side of his personality. Where do we see you on stage? Oh, come on. Davenport, Iowa, June the 3rd. Mesa, Arizona, June the 10th. Lexington, Kentucky, June the 24th. Where do we get this if we didn't jot that down? Go to foxacrossamerica.com or listen to me on the radio after you on the Fox News app. Jimmy Fallon, thanks so much. Miss you already. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.